Back in 2017, now one of the top players of his draft class, Donovan Mitchell was selected as the 13th overall pick by the Denver Nuggets and quickly traded to the Utah Jazz. Although in hindsight, there's no doubt that he should have been selected earlier, especially considering some of the disappointing careers of high picks in his draft class so far. But still, the 2017 NBA draft still had some outstanding talent regardless. As you probably know, Donovan Mitchell has averaged over 20 points per game in every single season of his NBA career. And now in his seventh NBA season, he's averaging over 28 points, six rebounds and six assists per game, as well as two steals, leading a dominant Cavs team to a top spot in the East. That being said, six years ago, there were 12 players who were considered better prospects than Mitchell. So what happened to those 12 players drafted before him? And where are they now? Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. The draft began with Washington guard Markel Fultz, selected by the Philadelphia 76ers first overall, after they traded up from the third overall pick with the Boston Celtics. And what a grave mistake that proved to be, because Fultz would have quite a problematic start to his NBA career, despite high expectations to flourish in the backcourt alongside Ben Simmons. Although as expected, he proved to be a good finisher in the paint, his shooting quickly proved to be an issue, and even more so after encountering a shoulder injury early in his career, significantly impacting his shooting ability. This led to concerns and bust allegations, as his jump shot just seemed really awkward, and everyone could see it. Despite these challenges, Fultz has managed to rebuild himself into a solid role player for the Orlando Magic. However, a knee injury sidelined him for a significant amount of time in this season so far. Overall, Fultz has not fully lived up to the expectations associated with being a first overall pick, and although not a bust yet, maintaining good health will be integral for his future in the NBA. The oldest ball brother, Lonzo Ball, was chosen with the second overall pick by the LA Lakers after coming out of Chino Hills, California and UCLA. Despite quickly demonstrating elite passing and defending skills for a rookie point guard, he initially struggled with three-point shooting and finishing, underperforming under the bright lights of LA. He was subsequently traded in a deal for Anthony Davis, which saw multiple of his young teammates move to New Orleans, where he successfully revamped his shooting form and became a proficient three-point shooter with a brand new stroke. However, lingering knee and ankle injuries often interrupted his good play putting a halt to multiple good runs he made. However, he would usually swiftly recover from these injuries and continue his good play, and this saw his trade value continue to rise. So he was again traded, this time to the Bulls, alongside Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. And Lonzo continued to improve his game on all fronts, fitting into the starting lineup perfectly. That being said, an injury has kept him off the NBA court since January 2022, there's no doubt that when healthy, Lonzo is a top point guard in the league, with his elite level distribution stemming from his unselfishness, his great three-point shooting, and very good perimeter defense. Lonzo is now set to return to the NBA in the 2024-25 season, with his recovery process taking much longer than expected. All we can do for Lonzo now is hope that injuries don't completely destroy his career, as he is such an exciting player to watch on the court. Securing the third pick after trading down from the first pick, the Boston Celtics made almost the perfect move, as they were clear in their affinity to Jason Tatum's game prior to the NBA draft before selecting him third overall. The forward from Duke has not only become a four-time All-Star, but also earned a spot on the All-NBA first team last season, establishing himself as one of the premier basketball players in the NBA. He is not only an offensive beast, with an elite three-level scoring game, he's also had good defense ever since his rookie year. In Jason Tatum, the Boston Celtics have discovered their cornerstone alongside Jalen Brown, and the pair would also lead the team to multiple deep postseason runs, including Eastern Conference Finals appearances and even an NBA final appearance in 2022. Although falling slightly short when it mattered most, drafting Jason Tatum is undoubtedly one of the best choices the Celtics made in recent times reigniting excitement in Boston and raising hopes that he could bring an end to the Celtics' championship dry spell in the foreseeable future. 
the highest pick of this draft class, currently without a team, Josh Jackson's NBA journey hasn't gone as planned. Selected fifth overall, and after two seasons with the Phoenix Suns, he was traded to the Memphis Grizzlies, before seeing stints on the Detroit Pistons and Sacramento Kings in the following seasons. Although a shooting guard, Josh Jackson could not seem to shoot at all, showing very minimal offensive ability, and his defense was not great either. And as he continued his underwhelming play, he would soon make appearances in the G League, before his career completely hit a roadblock, and he's been without a team since January 2023. The Sacramento Kings' recent success can largely be attributed to the stellar consistent performances of De'Aaron Fox. As a fifth overall pick, Fox showed great signs in his rookie season, and he emerged as an exciting scorer and good facilitator. And as he spent more time in the league, he would continue to improve his jump shot, soon becoming a prolific three-level scorer. Fox has now become a cornerstone for the Kings, also making an all-star appearance in the prior season. And despite his individual brilliance, the one thing he's missing is playoff success. But with improved support around him, with the Kings front office recently acquiring Tomonta Sabonis, the Kings are now on an upwards trajectory as they continue to push deeper for postseason runs. Selected as a sixth overall pick, the lengthy forward Jonathan Isaac faced unfortunate challenges in his NBA journey, and this began in his rookie season. Despite showing some good rim protection in his early years, also with decent shooting for a big, Isaac tragically encountered another significant setback when he tore his ACL in 2020, leading to an absence from the league until January 2023. Unfortunately, his comeback was cut short by another injury, an abductor injury, which put him out for another long stint. So Isaac is now working towards slowly getting back on the court, playing limited minutes for the Magic, hoping to string together some healthy runs with good output. Regardless, if only Isaac can maintain decent health, there's no doubt that he can become a contributing backup big man for many NBA teams. Selected as a 7th overall pick of the draft, Larry Markadon would show great talent for the Bulls early, especially with his great shooting for a big guy. And after a great rookie and sophomore season, averaging over 15 points per game on good shooting splits, the following season would see Lowry have diminished output, which began drawing some concern, and a change of scenery away from Chicago seemed imminent. As a result, following five years of inconsistency with the Bulls, the 2022-23 season marked a remarkable turnaround for Larry Markadon after being traded to the Utah Jazz, seeing him make his first All-Star appearance, and also earning recognition as the NBA's most improved player in the same season. Known for his shooting ability as a big man, Markadon averaged an impressive 26 points per game last season, finally beginning to reach the high potential that has been long associated with his name since his early days in Chicago. Selected 8th overall by the Knicks, French point guard Frank Nilakina has struggled to surpass 7 points per game throughout his 6 seasons in the NBA. With Nilakina simply not living up to the hype, which saw him have a two-year stint on the Dallas Mavericks, following his four seasons with the Knicks. Neil Aquino was primarily seen as a defensive player, and although he showed some ability as an active perimeter defender, he didn't make up for the lackluster offensive output. Currently with the Charlotte Hornets, he hasn't played a single game this season, raising questions if his NBA career will even continue in the foreseeable future. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Point guard Dennis Smith Jr. was seen as the most athletic guard in the draft after being drafted by the Mavericks 9th overall. And in his time at Dallas, he was given plenty of opportunity in his early years. And although averaging 15 points per game in his rookie season, lingering injuries began to significantly affect his time on court, unable to have good stints in Dallas. He was soon traded to the New York Knicks, however, injuries still lingered and this would soon show during his time on court, where his offensive efficiency always seemed to be a problem. That being said, the 2022-23 season saw him join the Charlotte Hornets, as he would swiftly fall into a post-prime Russell Westbrook type role, 
showing active rebounding and playmaking for a guard, despite lacklustre shooting. And all of the days of potentially becoming a superstar are likely out of the window. Last season saw Dennis Smith Jr. become a great role-playing guard, rejuvenating his NBA career. And in this season, he's on a Brooklyn Nets team falling into a similar role. And he's had quite an impressive season so far, especially considering he was just fighting bus allegations a few years prior. This season has seen Dennis Smith Jr. average over 7 points on almost 42% from the field, but more significantly getting 3 rebounds per game, including 1 offensive rebound per game, 1 steal, and over 4 assists in just 20 minutes. As for the 10th pick, Gonzaga big man Zach Collins was drafted onto a Portland Trailblazers team, who were still trying to make the most out of Damian Lillard's prime. And Collins proved to be a good bench rotational piece, and even stepped up in the absence of use of Nurkic. And despite making good defensive contributions, being a good rim protector, injuries significantly limited his playing time over the years, soon leading to him becoming a free agent and later signing to the San Antonio Spurs. Since joining San Antonio in a rotational role alongside Wembenyama, earning a significant contract extension in October 2023. He's played most games this season so far, and as long as Collins can maintain decent health, there's no doubt his energy and rim protection will see him fit into a role on many NBA teams. Drafted 11th overall, Kentucky guard Malik Monk spent the majority of his four seasons with the Charlotte Hornets coming off the bench as a near 20 minute per game contributor. Despite demonstrating good scoring and playmaking ability, he faced some off the court issues and was soon traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. With the Lakers, Monk proved to be one of the bright spots in a disappointing season for the Lakers, not even making the playoffs. Monk averaged almost 14 points for the season on 47% from the field and 39% from three and this season would significantly improve his value. And as he became a free agent, he was signed by the Sacramento Kings, quickly contributing as an efficient scorer and secondary playmaker behind Fox. And despite not usually starting, Malik Monk has proven to be one of the best finishers in Sacramento. But regardless, in his career so far, Monk has proved to be a very good NBA player. Selected 12th overall by the Pistons, Luke Kennard was seen as probably the best shooter of the draft, and he quickly proved this to be true. In his rookie season, Kennard shot over 41% from three, and continued this trend in the coming years. As he continued to grow his trade value, he was soon traded to the Clippers and quickly began being seen as one of the league's best shooters. Despite some lingering injuries, Kennard has now returned and is coming off the bench, continually showcasing his elite shooting. And as we know, with the 13th overall pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, Donovan Mitchell was selected by the Denver Nuggets and quickly traded to the Jazz. He was seen as a talented three-level scorer and would prove this to be true from day one. Now becoming one of the best offensive guards in the entire NBA and is also a four-time, now five-time NBA All-Star. Although he could make improvements in areas like his playmaking, Donovan has proved to be an absolute steal for a player who barely snuck into the lottery in 2017. Now a part of an exciting young Cavs team, it'll be interesting to see how far they can make it in the postseason with their roster, with hopes to one day match LeBron's impact on the Cavaliers franchise. Anyways, that's it. The 12 players selected before Donovan Mitchell. Although within these 12 picks, we have superstars like Jason Tatum, De'Aaron Fox and Larry Markadon. The career trajectories of many other high picks have been disappointing to say the least. Thanks for watching Sportsphere. Where do you think Donovan Mitchell ranks among the top 13 picks of this draft? Please let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next video.